Hello, and welcome to our research presentation, Unlocking Hidden Rules of Office Hours, a game jam on the first-generation college students' experiences. My name is Dr. Matthew Farber. I'm an Associate Professor of Educational Technology at the University of Northern Colorado. And my name is Will Merchant. I'm an Associate Professor in the Department of Applied Statistics and Research Methods at the University of Northern Colorado. Both Will and I are co-directors of the Gaming SEL Lab, which is uh, where we study how games can afford or maybe limit social and emotional learning. Uh, and this is where we published and um, run some of our collaborative research. So the uh, origin story of our study uh, came from actually me in the car driving to uh, campus and I was listening to our local NPR affiliate and they were running the latest in a series about college admissions. Interestingly and coincidentally called the college admissions game which may have been part of the nexus of that idea. And um, this particular episode had to do with office hours, how office hours uh, was what they called scary to first generation students. Uh, and the quote here from the piece is, for many college office hours can feel like there are a hidden set of rules, which uh, came uh, called to mind the hidden curriculum. Uh, that we often speak about in schools, uh, but here they call the game with a hidden set of rules, which again, uh, got our minds going with what this might look like if um, students themselves reconstruct what their experiences are like a game. I'm gonna play a little clip here from that NPR piece. Many students show up for college and find it is a whole different world than the one they are used to, especially low-income students or those whose parents didn't go to college. For many, it can feel like there is a hidden set of rules. Here's NPR's Alyssa Nadwerny of NPR's Life Kit team with some help to sort out one of the biggest mysteries of college, that scary thing called office hours. Ask just about any college student. Office hours are the most intimidating thing that I think anyone told me about. Anaya Washington is a sophomore at Amherst College in Massachusetts. And when she first got to campus, professors, they were the smartest people she'd ever seen. And this idea that she was just going to go in and talk to them, ask questions. I remember being absolutely terrified. And I was like, isn't that what class is for? Like, what else am I supposed to talk to them about? This fear is so universal that Arizona State University made a satirical video about it. You so the, uh, the video is a response to um, students who were fearful of heading to office hours. And as the uh, NPR piece states, it was a satirical piece uh, using humor to then engage students who want to attend office hours. Uh, so digging deeper in what the literature is on office hours at college, uh, we found that, yes, it can be um, intimidating. Uh, in fact, um, some students may feel a sense of intimidation when meeting one-on-one -on -one with college professors. Uh, further, students may simply be told when and where office hours occur on a syllabus statement, uh, but an explanation beyond that syllabus statement such as what exactly is office hours is often lacking. Uh, as a result, there may be a quote, roadblock to inclusion and belonging, one that impedes access to places where connections are made, bonds are forged and information is shared. In some universities, office hours are rarely defined and many students have no idea how important they are beyond their stated purpose, according to Jack 2019. Thus, expectations of office hours may remain hidden. This can be exasperated with first-generation populations of students, those who are the first in their families to enter a four-year college degree program. The board policy of the university where the study took place states, all instructional staff members whose responsibilities involve students are expected to schedule a reasonable number of office hours for student conferences. Office hours should be at times convenient to both students and instructors with the additional option of pre-arranged appointments for students when there is a scheduled conflict. The number of office hours is to be determined at the appropriate administrative level and office hours should be a matter of common knowledge. So 
our, our format or our population for our office hours study, office hours game jam was a group called Cumbris. So what is Cumbris? Um, welcome to the Cumbris program at UNC. We're a scholarship and support program for students who are planning to become CLD teachers. Our goal is to support, encourage, and prepare you to be an effective and compassionate teacher of English learners. Uh, Cumbris is a learning community. We're committed to student success and making you the most qualified teacher candidate when you graduate. As a member of the program, you are expected to participate fully in the four components, living community, learning community, mentorship, and leadership development. Cumbris is recognized nationally as an example of excellence in, in education. And uh, CLD is um, what the state where this study took place calls culturally and linguistically diverse education, which is an endorsement in teacher education. Um, some states call it um, ELL, um, but here it's uh, CLD, culturally and linguistic diverse education. Uh, not, not necessarily all of the students who are in the Coombrace program are um, in those populations, but they plan to teach that population of students. Our research was guided by the following methods and research questions. We used a qualitative case study design where we examined these research questions. By designing game themed, by designing games themed on college office hours experience, we analyzed what themes emerged from the student created game jam artifacts. What were students' experiences and perceptions of participating in the game jam? How do students perceive the final game jam product? And how do students perceive a game jam as an approach for harnessing student voice? At the game jam itself, we gave a prompt to students uh, once they were taught some of the fundamentals of games, what games are, playing some games together, and um, using games as a, a form of mentor text so uh, they understand the uh, tool that we're, we're using uh, and uh, expectations of design. Uh, so the prompt was design a game to raise awareness of the situations that Cumbrae's college students encounter when experiencing office hours. And here we have some slides from the game jam. Um, it was featured in an article at uh, University of Northern Colorado. Um, very high participation. On the bottom, you can see the survey that we distributed to start collecting data about people's experiences as well as their observational data. And uh, the uh, playtest form was adapted from ones used at Quest to Learn School, developed by the Institute of Play, which is housed at the uh, Connected Learning Alliance. And uh, there's also an image you could see of uh, Will um, running through a brainstorm activity about how. Uh, the Kubre students perceived office hours. So these are some of the pre-activities before they went on computers and worked uh, in individually on computers to develop stories using uh, the Twine application. Uh, this is an example of a story map. Uh, this is called Tiny Al on Campus. This one was uh, featured in UNC today as well as the student was interviewed. Um, for the university. So she uh, de-anonymized herself for that. And this is an example of the uh, hidden system, the hidden rules that the student remapped using Twine because uh, Twine is an interactive fiction writing tool uh, where you can create choose your own adventure type of stories, which may have causes and effects, but as you can see, also loops. The Game Jam design artifacts were coded and analyzed for a deeper understanding of youth's lived college experience, the systems that impact their lived experience and their ability to express and experiment with those systems through the process of game design. Additionally, we looked at basic descriptive statistics of Game Jam preferences and participants' perceptions were recorded in a post-Game Jam survey, which we also analyzed. Data, uh, data were analyzed through the elements of connected learning, the theoretical framework of the study. Uh, so uh, we were providing uh, opportunities, but we were also looking at the opportunities that um, students had to uh, like attend office hours, right? Uh, how they interpreted that. And then they were bringing in their own interests uh, and developing relationships as well throughout the uh, game jam itself. And we share these on our Labs Itch.io page, uh, which I will run through quickly some of the um, results 
or some of their games uh, and what they look like, which were again, twine games. And so for our discussion and implications, um, we felt that the game jam itself afforded opportunities for participation to author narratives on their own experiences. And in some cases, those narratives may have been rooted in a sort of self-study. Two of the games that were created, The Quest for Office Hours and Office Hours at Cormine Academy, featured wizards as students and storylines not unlike fiction in Harry Potter novels. Uh, like fan fiction writing more generally, the game gen itself became an opportunity for these interests to manifest as interactive hypertext fiction. The game jam event itself afforded opportunities for interests, but also for relationships to develop. Uh, regarding the relationships, one of the participants stated that she would take part in another game jam, uh, calling it a fun way to learn about technology. That's a quote from the uh, media coverage of the article from this particular student. She continued stating, quote, especially since the pandemic, I think a lot of kids of all ages <clears throat> are now learning off of technology. And for my generation, we grew up on technology. So I think exposure to it is fairly vital just because that's what's out there in the real world. In the post, -jam, post game jam survey, many participants expressed that they desired more time to develop their games. Even though the event itself is scheduled for five hours on a Saturday and the game jams are often brief experiences, limits on time were a constant response. Other responses including, included an appreciation of the process itself as an approach to learn coding and storytelling as a possible valuable classroom tool. We also found that the um, participants appreciated um, their, uh, the affordances to share their experiences uh, the, the, the coding of games and creating games and learning twine, that was uh, secondary. These were not game design students. Uh, maybe some of them might pursue game design. Uh, one of the students uh, has been doing this in one of my other courses. But overall, the, the goal uh, was to surface their own experiences using game design, not the other way around. Sometimes it's teaching game design and finding out experiences. We wanted to find out experiences through game design. Thank you for watching our presentation. Um, we look forward to doing more game jams and sharing the results with you in the future. Thank you so much.